I can't do it. I can't be an apologist if I can't do what they do. Well, maybe you're not called to sit on Catholic radio and take whatever phone calls come in, but it's a lie, a lie from the evil one to say that you're not called to be an apologist. We are all called to be an apologist. An apologist is just someone who gives the reason for the hope within. Yeah, but I don't have all those reasons lined up. What I want to share with you today is you, you don't need that. What I want to share with you is that to be a great defender of the Catholic faith. Because sometimes we think, oh, just by osmosis, I'll go to all these conferences and I'll read all these books. And we think we're going to read all these books. And then next to our bet nightstand, we get this Tower of Babel that starts growing. Of all these books we were planning on reading. And we turn the ministry of evangelism into a spectator sport. We're like the people that enjoy watching the games, but we're scared to go out on the field because we only want to leave that to the professionals. If only the professionals evangelize, the church will die. It will die. Now you say, but I don't have all the skills, but here's the great thing. God does not call the equipped. He equips the called. And in particular, I want you to remember this. To be a great Catholic apologist, you do not need to have all of the right answers. You just need to have the right questions. To be a great Catholic apologist, you do not need all the right answers. You just need the right questions. Sometimes we think you watch Catholic radio, you listen to talks, you think being an apologist means this guy has his objection and I've got my argument, my answer right here. When they say this, you say that. Well, we, we can't prepare for life, and that's not how life really works. And we think, I've got to have the perfect answer for every argument. But rather, one thing we forget to do a lot is to say, wait a minute. People won't appreciate the good news of what we believe. Our faith will not be good news until whatever they currently believe is bad news. Right? If everything's fine, you're not interested. I'm not interested in what you have to offer because everything I've got is great. I, I might humor you, you know, listen to you about your Catholic faith, all that stuff, but that's your thing. My thing is working just fine for me. We can't make headway until we show people the bad news, that if their worldview is not Catholic, there is going to be something false, inconsistent, and sometimes quite ugly about it. And we have to gently show that to them. But how do we do that? Oh, you're not Catholic? Your worldview is false, inconsistent, and ugly. Bet you didn't know that. Well, people don't hear that. Instead, we should use an approach uh, made popular 2,500 years ago by a guy named Socrates. So Socrates, Socrates. Socrates was described as the gadfly of Athens. Uh, he was also someone whose face was just so weird looking, it was like a car wreck. You couldn't take your eyes off of him. But how he really annoyed people was he always asked people questions and people said, Socrates is the wisest guy out there. And he said, I'm not smart. I just know that guy does not know what he's talking about. And I'm going to ask him a question to show that he doesn't know what he's talking about. You fast forward 500 years later, another very smart guy uses the same method to great effect. His name is Jesus. Uh, you go to Mark chapter 11. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. And they go up to Jesus and they try to get him in a trap. They say, Jesus, we have a question for you. Uh, who, well, they, they're indignant, actually. They go up to him and they say, who gave you the authority to teach, the authority to do these things? Now, Jesus could have given a long theological answer or a short one. My dad, the guy who made everything. But instead, he said to them, and this is the dynamic Trent Horn parallel living message Bible translation. I tell you what, guys. I will answer your question if you're willing to answer one of mine. But you got to answer my question first, then I will answer yours. The baptism of John, is it from heaven or from earth? Answer my question, and then I will answer yours. Mark tells us that the Pharisees got into a huddle, and they realized they were in a bit of a jam. Uh, if they said it was from heaven, the people are going to say, well, why didn't you endorse, formally endorse John and the ministry he was doing? The Pharisees had a kind of live and let live relationship with this crazy wild guy out in the desert. If they say, though, no, it's from earth, well, then the people are going to revolt. Because even if the Pharisees are a bit hands off, the people know John is the real deal. He's a prophet. So they do what happens to me a lot on radio when people don't want to answer one of my questions. 
we don't know. And then Jesus says, then neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. And then Mark tells us this interesting detail. And then Jesus reached into his tunic and took out a microphone and he dropped it. I'm just, it's in some manuscripts. Codex Beze, it's a variant manuscript. Um, so notice, just by asking a question, he revealed, the, he allowed the Pharisees to reveal their own hypocrisy instead of simply saying the Pharisees are hypocrites, which they were. Instead of saying it, he let them reveal it to themselves. One last example of this method. One time I was snowed in in Wichita, Kansas. When I was a missionary, I just graduated college. Our home base was in Wichita. I was snowed in at a friend's house. He wasn't home. No internet, no cable TV. I, there was a DVD player, and in the entertainment cabinet, there was one collection of DVDs, the entire, the entire series of Columbo. Just Columbo. And I watched Columbo for a week. It's very repetitive, but I, I mean, it's, it's interesting stuff. Ah, see, and I just have one more question. I just have one more question for you. Columbo is a really cool show because it's a crime show, but you know who the killer is right off the bat on Columbo. So where's the mystery? The mystery is not who is the killer. The mystery is how is Columbo going to catch him? And he always catches him the same way when you watch it, the entire series in a week. He just relentlessly asks questions, and he comes off as this like disheveled, not quite altogether there guy with his hat and his coat. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm getting ashes everywhere on your nice rug here. Ah, something just been bothering me. Tell me this. Because he doesn't go in puffing his chest. Kind of lures the guy into a false sense of security, then asks him questions that become more and more awkward that dissolve the suspect's alibi. And so when we speak to others, that's the tone we need to have. Not, I'm here to, to defeat you. When I, back in several months ago in Austin, there was a conference for priests. Dr. Hahn was speaking at it. And I decided to drove down with my five-year-old, Matthew, uh, our first dad-son alone overnight trip. Super fun. Stopped at his, all the fast food places we wanted to stop at. Like, he got to go and meet all the priests, meet Dr. Hahn. Uh, and I remember in the hotel room, he's like, can we watch a movie? I was like, yeah, sure. Your mom's not here. You're with dad. And, he goes, and we watched the movies that are on TV, and they had Matilda on, based on the Roald Dahl book. And, you know, there's the dad in Matilda. He tells Matilda, I'm big, you're small. I'm smart, you're dumb. And sometimes we don't want to, we have that same kind of attitude when we want to say, oh, you believe this about the Bible? Well, I'm right, you're wrong. I'm biblically literate, you're biblically illiterate. And Ephesians 4.15 says we should always speak the truth in love. And we should have an attitude where we gently ask questions and with an attitude not of I'm right, you're wrong, but I'm trying to figure out the truth. Can you help me to get there with you? I just want to understand you. That the one thing you can do in a conversation, get rid of the goal of I'm going to convert this person. Sorry, you're not going to do that. You can't do that. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. But if you start with the goal of, I want to perfectly understand this person, and they perfectly understand where I'm coming from, anybody can make that goal if you listen and ask questions.